For the sake of our guests, I'm going to explain what I'm about to do here. Every last Sunday of the month during the school year, we go back to one of the basic, uh, basics of Christian education and Christian biblical teaching in the catechism. And we're going through the Lord's Prayer this year. The second petition is the part we're looking at today. So if you would, please take out one of those maroon hymnals and let's turn to page 324 at the very front. Maroon hymnal, page 324. We say the Lord's Prayer so often about every service, but do we know what it is we're asking for? Here's a way to examine what it means. So let's read together, uh, page 324, the second petition. Thy kingdom come together. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. You can close it now if you want to, or keep it open if, it, if it's helpful to you. As we go into this explanation today, it's very appropriate to be talking about the kingdom of God, his kingdom coming on this Christmas season, because we just celebrated the birth of a most unlikely king, the one who came from David's lineage, born in Bethlehem, born to be king of all. He is, was not recognized. If you were here on Christmas morning, we read the reading from, first, or from John chapter 1. He came to his own, and, but his own did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, he is God and Savior. We have in this explanation the fact that we don't pray that God would come because if we don't, he won't. We pray that the Lord who rules over all things will come specially to us. And that is, we didn't make him king. You don't elect a king. It was not our idea that God would be, that Christ would be the king. He came to us by his own initiative. But we're praying not just that God would come to us, like he came to Bethlehem, but that he would also come in us, that is, inside of us, so that we might be part of his kingdom. Now, the Bible teaches that God rules really in three ways, if you think about it. First of all, Psalm 103, 19 says, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over all. We call that the kingdom of power. God made a universe. He spoke into being light, firmament, stars. He spoke, and there was a planet, animals. He breathed into dust life, and there was Adam. God reigns, and he keeps the world going in a sustainable, orderly fashion. That's why we always have spring after winter, and then summer, and then fall. It doesn't have, you know, two springs this year, next year three winters. No, it's always because God's in charge, and God is not an author of confusion. God keeps things going for us. He limits the forces of evil. There was an end to a Hitler. There was an end to a, to a Stalin, to a Tamerlane. I'm reading that about that now. There is an end, and God puts limits to how far catastrophes can go. Every drought ends someday. Every flood ends sometime. God, with his infinite wisdom, does things with the physical world, whether we understand them or not. But the kingdom we're especially asking for, coming to us and inside us, is God's kingdom of grace. That is what is found within the Holy Christian Church. Think about it. The kingdom of God comes, as Luther explained, when the Holy Spirit enters us by the power of God's word. And that word brings us to repentance and faith. It makes us be born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, a wise man who was trying to figure this out, Jesus said, you must be born again of water and the Spirit. The Spirit of God moves us to this thing called repentance. When he tells us the Ten Commandments, at first we rebel and go, who says what I can do and can't do? But after a while we realize those commandments were given to protect me and to, to keep my life from being chaotic. And Lord, I've broken them and I'm sorry I broke them, and I wish I didn't keep breaking them. Repentance is nothing more than admitting who we are apart from God 
and regretting it and wanting it to be over, being apart from God, that is. And God says, I have washed your sins away. The grace of Jesus Christ is his undeserved, unmerited forgiveness. We didn't say, Jesus, forgive me by dying on the cross. He first died on the cross so we could be forgiven and desire him to wash away not just the, the guilt of our sin and its curse, but also its control over us. And no one can come to this knowledge, this faith, unless the Father draws him, John says in chapter 6. The Father draws us to the word, to the foot of the cross where we lay our sins, and Jesus' blood washes them away. The Holy Spirit helps us realize this wasn't just for everybody else. It's for me who needs it. For you. He really did take our place. He really exchanged our sin for his holiness. He died to destroy sin's power over us and gives us that his perfect record with the Father. That is what it means to belong to the kingdom of grace. And where do you hear about this? Only where the word of God is preached in the Christian church and where the sacraments are words added to water and bread and wine bring that same word of forgiveness that give us a life that never ends. Now, when we say, Lord, I want to be part of this kingdom, we're also saying, Lord, I want everyone to be part of this kingdom because why should we be greedy and say it's just for me? God so loved the world. Everyone. He died for everyone. The fact that some refuse him does not mean he didn't want them or love them. God wants everyone. So we pray in that prayer, your kingdom come, Lord, to everyone. May more people know you. May more people trust you, believe that you are the God of their salvation. And in that, we're also kind of praying, and Lord, use me to get that word out. Because Jesus said to his disciples, meaning all of us, you will be my disciples. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So when we pray, your kingdom come, we're also saying, Lord, open my mouth so that I can tell my coworkers, my family, my kids, grandkids, my, my fellow students that you're real, that you're the most real thing there is, that you're the only source of life and forgiveness and joy that never ends. We do that when we share the word of forgiveness, that I'm not going to heaven because I'm good, but because God has been good to me, and he wants to take you there too. He is good to you and loves you, and washes all your sins away. And, and I can't tell that in the Swahili, the Southern Africa, so sometimes I'll joyfully give part of my, my income as an offering. But then sometimes I will speak to somebody who doesn't know him yet. So we speak, we give, because we want God's kingdom of life to come to everyone. Oh, there's one more kingdom awaiting, the place where he reigns now beyond our sight, the kingdom of glory. All those who have departed in the faith, all those who were waiting for a Savior in the times of Abraham and Moses and David, all those who have been brought to faith since Jesus died and rose and ascended into heaven, all of us are joined into that glorious family of God that will never end. And the souls of those who have died in the faith are already with him. And we await the day when he comes back and raises and glorifies our bodies and we'll have the fullness of of that kingdom of glory. All who have trusted in him, all who have, who have believed that God is merciful and forgiveness will share in a kingdom of light and life. No more sorrow or pain or tears, no darkness, only perfect joy and a celebration that never ends. I also want that. I also look forward to that when I pray. Your kingdom come, God, heaven is going to be so great. Can't wait to get there. Help us by your spirit to keep trusting in you until you take us there. We're praying a whole lot of stuff, in other words, when we pray the Lord's Prayer. I hope we never fall in the trap of just saying as a matter of words. But it is our loving Father who made us, whose name is holy, and he puts that holiness over us, and he gathers us into his kingdom. Next month, we'll look at the next petition, and I hope as you pray that prayer today, it has even more meaning as you realize what you're asking God to give to us and how we ask him to bless us 
in the Lord's Prayer.